I only realized this not too long ago. So let's look at 5.2. Uh, so the question says that, uh, let's consider the statement below. The rate of decomposition of N2O5 is half the rate of formation of NO2. Is this statement true or false? Give a reason for the answer. Do you know that you can actually use the balancing coefficient to find the rate of reaction of one compound you have if you have the rate of reaction of the other i just only realized that not too long ago and it's exactly and it is exactly how we're supposed to answer 5.2 and 5.3.2 right so let's just do 5.1 first before we attempt those questions uh, so in the question statement we are told that uh, consider the following decomposition reaction that takes place in a sold two decimeter cube container and we are given an equation right here right and then it goes on to say that uh, the graph below shows the concentration of N2O5 and NO2 change with time right so if we look at our graph here uh, you can see that uh, one graph starts at 200 and then it goes down to this point here while the other one starts here and it is going up and then the question refer to the graph above and give a reason why curve a represents the change in concentration of no2 so let's go to our equation and look at no2 you can see that no2 is one of our products right so our products uh the concentration should be starting at zero and this is exactly what we have here uh for this graph a for this graph a our concentration is starting at zero and it's going up and then for the reactions it is starting at 200 moles per decimeter cube and it is actually going down right so uh, that is the reason why we saying that kev a represents n o true right and then uh, moving to the second question so we just did 5.1 let's do 5.2 consider the statement below the rate of decomposition of n 5 is half the rate of formation of no2 is this statement true or false give a reason for the answer so let's go ahead and find out uh, what i was telling you earlier was that we can actually say that let's look at our equation we need to be basing everything on our equation right let me just copy it down real quick so we have two n2 o5 uh, decomposing uh to give us four n o2 plus O2. And then the question is saying uh, the rate of decomposition of N2O5 is half the rate of formation of NO2. Right. So let's go ahead and figure out whether that is true or not. Right. Uh, we can say that the rate of N2O5 divided by uh, the rate of NO2 is equals to the ratio of, of their balancing coefficients. Right. Here we have two uh for n205 and here we have four for n02 so we're gonna have two divided by four and then the rate of n205 divided by the rate of n02 will clearly be equals to one divided by two right that is the same as two divided by four and if we cross multiply you're gonna get two multiply by the rate of n205 when it goes to uh, the rate of n02 right and then if you make uh, the rate of n205 the subject of the formula you're going to get the rate of n205 being equals to half the rate of no2 right it is clearly half the rate of no2 uh, so our answer uh, here is definitely true uh, the rate of decomposition of n205 is half the rate of formation of no2
true right you can see it from uh what i'm proposing here that to find the rate of the other while you have the rate of one you can use uh the ratio of the balancing coefficient uh anyway stories let's do 5.3 uh we have another interesting one here. uh so 5.3.1 uh we're looking for the mass of no2 present in the container at t is equals to 400 seconds so let's go to our graph um let's go to a graph so we've already established that um kev a is no2 right is the concentration of no2 and then in our equation we're looking for the mass of no2 present in the container so i need to you know, I have a few steps that I know I'm going to take to find the mass of NO2. So from the graph, I can extract the concentration, right? And I'm given the volume in the equation. So with these two variables, I can find the number of moles, right? Concentration is equal to number of moles divided by volume. And then from the number of moles, I can ultimately calculate the mass. Only then, when, I, when I'm 100% sure of all the steps that I'm going to take, will I start solving the problem? So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say that uh, the number of moles is equal to the concentration multiplied by the volume. So let's go ahead and see how much concentration uh, we have at T is equal to uh, 400. So when T is equal to 400, you can see that our concentration is 200, right? We're looking for this curve A. Our concentration is 200 well not so quite i want you to look at something look at our y-axis we have the concentration and the isi unit is times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cube so the concentration is actually not 200 but 200 times 10 to the minus 4 right i hope you didn't make that mistake because the first time when I tried solving this problem, I actually made that mistake and took the concentration as 200 instead of 200 multiplied by 10 to the minus 4. So if we use uh, 200 uh, multiplied by 10 to the minus 4, uh, the volume is given to us as 2 decimeter uh, cube, right? So we're going to get uh, 400 times 10 to the minus 4 being our number of moles so now that we have the number of moles we can go ahead and find the mass right we know that uh, the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass so the mass will be the number of moles divided by multiplied by uh, the molar mass i meant and then this will be equal to so what's our number of moles our number of moles is 400 times 10 to the minus 4 and then the molar mass of NO2 so the molar mass of N nitrogen that is 14 and the molar mass of O2 is 32 right now we are multiplying uh, those two numbers we have uh, right there so let me just uh, do that real quick and see what I get so 14 plus 32 multiplied by 400 times 10 to the minus 4, I'm getting 1.84 grams. So right, uh, that is uh, the mass we have at equilibrium. It's actually supposed to be uh, 1.84 grams. Right, uh, let's move to the following question. Um, uh, the average rate of production of O2 in moles per decimeter cube in 700 seconds. Right, so again, uh, we're looking for the average rate of production of O2, right? But then we don't have a graph for O2 here. So to make our life easy, let's find the rate of production of NO2 and use the balancing coefficient to find uh, the rate of production of O2. Oh, we can also use the rate of decomposition of N2O5, right? One between the two. So if we use uh, the rate of uh, production of NO2, we're going to find uh, the change in the concentration divided by the change in time. So the concentration 
it starts at zero right so this is our initial and then our final at t is equal to 700 so 700 is somewhere here so our final should be there so let's go ahead and find uh, that exact value so from this point to this point is 50 units right 250 to 300 and we have 10 dots in between so one dot is five units so let's go ahead and find uh, our concentration when t is equal to 700 so we have uh, 250 here 255 260 265 uh, 270 275 280 so our final concentration is 280 and our initial concentration is zero right and then that divided by 700 well not 280 right i'm making the mistake again it's actually 280 multiplied by 10 to the minus 4 and then minus 0 right yeah we should be aware of uh that so 280 times 10 to the minus 4 uh divided by 700 and then uh, let me just take this answer to scientific uh, if I do that, I'm getting 4 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cube per second. So that is the rate of production of NO2. But what we're looking for is uh, the average rate of production of O2. So we can say that the rate of NO2 divided by the rate of O2 is equal to the ratio of the balancing coefficient so that will be 4 uh, divided by 1 so the rate of O2 is equal to the rate of NO2 divided by 4 this will be equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, divided by 4 it, it will give us uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cube per second right so that is uh, 5.3.2 uh, and then uh, 5.4 uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve for the N2O5 so our reactant initially present in the container is shown below uh, redraw the curve on this uh, redraw the curve above in your answer book and label this curve P on the same set of axes sketch the curve that will be obtained with higher concentration so with higher concentration uh, the curve that should be obtained should look something like that and now we just need to label it Q right, right. Uh, and then uh, 5.4.2 will the rate of decomposition of N2O5 at a higher concentration be higher than lower than or equal to the original rate of decomposition obviously we know that it's going to be higher than because if you increase the concentration you're going to have more number of moles per unit volume right and then if that is the case then more molecules will have a kinetic energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy more effective collisions per unit time